Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Are you ready for the need? The need for speed? Well, strap right in on your mighty wings to soar new heights up on the clear skies, performing all these stunts around, because I'm going to be reviewing the original 1986 80s classic that's an action drama adventure. As you may know, Top Gun with Tom Cruise as Lieutenant Pete Mitchell, aka Mad Rick, who's a young naval aviator who's joined in with his assistant and best friend, Radar Inceptor Officer Lieutenant Junior Grade Nick Bradshaw, known as Goose played by Anthony Edwards, as they aboard on the aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, and are being given a chance to assign at the U.S. Navy's fighter weapon school, known as, indeed, Top Gun. Joining in with all the rest of the students, including <laughs> um, Iceman, Yes, Lieutenant Tom Kosansky is played by Bell Kilmer. That's, a, that's Maverick's uh, Rain Man. But they're being teached by Lieutenant Commander Rick Hederly. He had Jester, who's played by Michael Ironside, along with the Chief Instructor Commander Mike Metcalf, known as Viper, played by Tom Skerritt. And because of his cocky attitude, and, <laughs> and he's a hot shot to join in with Goose, he falls in love with an actual physicist and a civilian Top Gun instructor, Charlie Brackwood, who, of course, his, her real name is Charlotte, played by Kelly McGillis, yeah, from Witness. Yeah. And we also get a lot of uh, stars um, like Tim Robbins, Meg Ryan, Clarence Goyard Jr., who just passed away recently, um, James Tolkien, yes, from Back to the Future as CDR, Tom Stinger, Guardian, uh, Adrian Prestar, John Stockwell, Rick uh, Rosabick, and a whole lot more. <laughs> yes. Totally groundbreaking for its time, it became the highest grossing film of 1986. Within seven months, throughout the summer and the fall, even straight to winter. <laughs> and yeah, which actually earned through its 15 million budget uh, 357.3 million. That was very strong at the time. By today's standards, this would have been much bigger. I think it would have been almost a billion at this point. I mean, who knows? <laughs> now, this is, of course, the 4K release that I picked up just recently at Best Buy. I was going to get this for $7.99 during the Black Friday deal, but it was sold out really quick. I couldn't find this until they bought it back for only $17.99. So it's like $11 more, but whatever. I had to take it. Because I was about to get all these other titles, too, uh, that, you know, with all the... The Christmas money that I've been saving for a while, I mean, this was great to finally pick this up. Especially now that we finally got the sequel after 36 years, which is Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, and I got that on 4K as well during Black Friday. And I'll show you that later. <laughs> uh, but right now I'm just going to show you the 4K of the original. So you can see how badass uh, Tom Cruise was at the time. As Madrick, you know, with the helmets, the 
the straight jackets uh, with all the patches, wearing the shades. He just looks totally awesome. <laughs> right there. Buffer his cockiness and all that. I mean, and because he's dangerous. <laughs> well, someone just can't trust him, for sure. <laughs> okay. Now, along with the 4K, which does include HDR, you know, high dynamic range, as it says, for brighter, deeper, more lifelike colors. Yes, because um, it just got a brand new 4K restoration. Well, it did came out in 2020, but still brand new at this point. Um, it developed a, out of its 35 millimeter prints, uh, film stock and all, has a little bit of grain, uh, but the rest of the film just looks stunningly beautiful, given a, a yellowish uh, color tint uh, filter to provide it, so it made it more sunnier, with some shadows here and there and it's even more sharper and clearer than ever um, has a lot of details considering the fact that this movie was shot on Super 35 so it gives you all the shots of all the um, the jet planes the the F-14s that you see or not to mention the all the uh, yeah the F-14A Tomcat along with the MIG 28s of any kind. I mean, all, it's all dog fighting. You know they they go up on the skies. You know, moving around and and you begin to see their close-ups uh, vertically. Sometimes non-vertically, but you get to see close-ups of their faces. You know, wearing the mask and their helmets given their names and they're getting ready to to aim target to shoot um, the ones you know like the bad guys and all that exactly how they're planned it's like a, uh, a competition in a way but that's how they're trained for they're trained for the best so no matter how big they are or how smart intelligent and all they're gonna to try to be able to go on combat for real yeah. and I know they they took a lot of effort to get this approved at the time when they did this movie like they weren't even so sure how this was gonna improve because in order to do so they wanted to make it more accurate and be able to get the entire uh, military team to accept it so that way because of all the politics going around here and there, they want to make sure that it's all clear. And this could be um, indeed a refreshing look at, uh, at jet uh, aviation uh, fighters around. You know, all the Navy fighters are going to go against, you know, the enemies once they're flying around to different countries around, like whatever... Like if they had to fight somewhere in in any country that's that's targeted around, like Korea or Afghanistan or Iran or any any other, you know, to target the enemy and all that. That's exactly what they're trained for. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, um, going back to the 4K, it does come with the Blu-ray. It's a brand new Blu-ray, of course. It's not the previous release, um, which I also have, by the way. I got the Blu-ray 3D, uh, which had this holographic uh, image of Maverick, you know, Tom Cruise himself, you know, with his straight jacket, patch and all, as a helmet, and getting ready to find his F-14A Tomcat um, jet plane. Yeah. <laughs> and... It not only had the Blu-ray 3D included, but it also had the 2008 Blu-ray release that um, contains all the extras that came out from the 2004 uh, DVD release. Yeah, it was a two-disc set. It has tons of extras. 
They even had the music videos, which includes uh, Take My Breath Away by Berlin. Yes. <laughs> um, which, of course, won the Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Song of the Film. And it also has Danger Zone with Kenny Loggins. Yeah. And a whole lot more. Yeah. <laughs> it's also included on this release, too. But they also added some new extras to join in. So, on the 4K, as listed here, on the back, as you can see. Wow, look how cool it looks. Yeah. <laughs> it has... Um, the 4K special feature of the legacy of Top Gun, yes, and that's how they took a lot of effort to improve that. And that's where you get interviews with Tom Cruise and some of the cast, even producer Jerry Bruckheimer, who they all work together as a team, along with director Tony Scott, which I know he's no longer with us. And he's the brother of Ridley Scott. Now, I know originally Matthew Muldeen was going to play the role of Maverick, but he turned it down due to politics. So, Cruz got the part after Ridley was doing um, a movie with uh, Cruz, of course, uh, called Legend, uh, which I know it was made in 85, but it came out the same year as uh, Top Gun. It just came out a little earlier. Yeah. I guess you could say it was sort of like, sort of an earlier Legend of Zelda type of film, if you think about it. I mean, imagine if this was a Legend of Zelda. But it's like a fairy tale, indeed. You know, he's the prince, about to save the princess from this evil uh, demon. Like, devil-like. Like, he's a Lucifer type. Yes, and, yeah, Mia... Mia Sarah, who went on to do the film, uh, The Curse Builder's Day Off, is the princess, and the villain is played by Tim Curry. I thought it was a great movie. There's two cuts that they have, either way, um, in spite of the mixed reviews it's gotten, but still. Well, that did the same here for this movie, because it had some initial mixed reviews from critics, which includes Cisco and Ebert. I mean, Cisco gave it a pass. I'm glad he did. Um, but Ebert, uh, not so much. But still. <laughs> but the movie just gets better and better as it follows. I first saw this movie on Select TV. Uh, when my dad recorded it on tape, I still have the tape too. Just so you know. <laughs> well... Give or take, I mean, it was an old tape. I mean, the recording is indeed what it is, you know. But at the time, this was the perfect way to watch movies, to record directly on a pay TV service. And I just never got tired of it. I watched this movie a lot as a kid. This movie eventually maybe became a huge fan of the actor Tom Cruise, um, even though... He had other films before that, yeah, such as Risky Business. That's a movie that definitely uh, became his breakthrough role. But this movie is indeed that made him a big star. So if it wasn't for Top Gun, he wouldn't be able to do any of these films uh, to follow, like Rain Man, for instance, uh, with Dustin Hoffman, or Cocktail. In spite of the mixed reviews. Uh, the Color Money as a sequel uh, with Paul Newman, who won an Oscar for that role. Not to mention all the films that he would have been doing throughout the late 80s, all the way through the 90s, and even today. Like, he wouldn't be doing uh, Days of Thunder. He wouldn't be doing uh, Born on the Fourth of July, or Far and Away. Mission Impossible, all of the Mission Impossible movies that he was doing. And even uh, films like um, Minority Reports. Yes, the War of the Worlds, uh, big deal. <laughs> 
But he would have done a lot of films. I mean, even Eyes Wide Shut uh, by Stanley Kubik, joined in with Nicole Kidman, which at the time when they were a couple, and then they left here and there. And I guess at that point on, he would have never got uh, Penelope Cruz for um, the movie, well, for a little while, uh, Penelope Sky. Um, he would have never got the part of Collateral. <laughs> that was directed by Michael Mann, or even end up uh, grabbing Dawson's Creek girl, Katie Holmes. And all of that. <laughs> But no matter what, I mean, he does his own stunts to every film. He's still indeed a legend. I mean, and now in his 60s, because he's now uh, 60, he'll be 61 this year. He's still stronger, more handsome, older, but better than ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now let's get back to that because I'm taking too much time. We also got On Your Six, which is the 30 years of Top Gun. Yeah, that's where we got new interviews with all the actors and even the ones for, for the new movie, which is Top Gun Maverick that came out last year. I went to see that in theaters and I just got the 4K uh, during Black Friday. I was so lucky to get that. It was it, it was indeed expensive, but hey, I had to take it because I just love it. I was very excited after all this time since I had to wait for like a few years until it finally came out. But I'm glad I did it. It's been 36 years now, and wow, I can't believe it. And it even surpasses the original film for all critics and commercially alone. So, I'm happy, very proud of Tom for having another successful sequel that he never thought he would see it coming. Because he wasn't so sure if he was going to do that anyway. After all the Mission Impossible films he's been doing. <laughs> so why not? Okay. So yeah, and it has a commentary by filmmakers and naval experts. So you'll be able to listen to the commentary of director Tony Scott's. Or any other, <laughs> like even producer Jerry Bookheimer, which I know he did team up with Don Simpson. Yeah, Don Simpson, no longer with us, of course. This too is the Blu ray, uh, the feature film, special features. Yeah, because it has the feature film. <laughs> so, same here. Uh, but it does include Danger Zone, The Making of Top Gun. It's a six-part documentary. Um, they got Tom Cruise interviews, uh, multi-angle yeah, multi storyboards, the best of the best <laughs> inside the real Top Gun. Yeah, just showing exactly what's it like because um, it's based on that. Even all the characters were based on the real life um, naval officers, lieutenants, and all. And how they trained them, and how they soar up in the air, and how they, they became indeed the best fighters. Yeah. The behind the scenes featurette, yeah, it's an older featurette from back in the day. Survival training featurette, and a whole lot more. Detail after detail, you get to watch all of that. And plus you get to add a digital code to be included. So if you so that way you can add it onto your Voodoo or any other digital account that you can choose. And you'll be able to watch it anytime. But most of all, physical media should do a lot of respect to. And also Back to the uh, Blu-ray 3D and the Blu-ray that's included with the holographic one that I got. I got that at Target back in 2014. I still have it. I wanted to show you that, but I thought, I guess I could just leave it at that because I think we already know what it looks like. 
Um, but it, it is indeed in one of my other uh, boxes around, or any of those other places. But I think I'm just going to keep it that way, for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I already used the code. <laughs> but you do get um, other uh, Tom Cruise uh, titles. Yeah, Days of Thunder and War of the Worlds, yeah. You can get that in stores. But you can get it at Best Buy, or hell, you can get it on Amazon if you want. Um, oh yeah, and <laughs> here's what it looks like. Yeah, it's in black. You see the Top Gun logo. It's 4K Ultra HD, or Ultra HD Blu-ray. Just tells you feature film, special features, and, and then you see one in blue. Says the same as usual, but but it's blue, <laughs> Blu-ray. So excellent set on this gorgeous black case <laughs> right there. And I know it gets moved out a bit, but don't worry, you can clean it. It'll, it'll look better right there. <laughs> okay, I'll talk a little bit more after I start the review. So, here we go. It stars Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis, Val Kilmer, Anthony Edwards, Tom Skerritt, Michael Ironside, John Stockwell, Barry Tubb, Rick Russellbick, Tim Robbins, Clarence Gilliard, Whip Hubley, James Tolkien, Meg Ryan, Adrian Pastar, and Aaron and Adam Weiss, based on the Top Gun article on the California Magazine by Erd Yane. Yeah, and it was a very popular article that they ever done. It's written by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. Went on to write uh, all these um, 80s films, such as Secret of My Success, Legal Eagles, you have the, the Ivan Reitman comedy, you know, with, um, yeah, it's a thriller too, uh, with Robert Redford, along with um, Daryl Hannah and Deborah Ringer. And it is produced by Don Simpson and Jared Bookheimer, and it's directed by Tony Scott. The movie begins where we meet the U.S. Naval Aviator Lieutenant Pete Mitchell known as Maverick, played by Tom Cruise, who's joined in with his best friend, Radar Acceptor Officer, Lieutenant Junior Grade Nick Bradshaw, known as Goose, played by Anthony Edwards, who are two hot shots with cocky attitudes and all, stationed in the Indian Ocean aboard the airport facility, the USS Enterprise which is also being run by C.A.G. Stinger, played by James Tolkien. <laughs> and they're about to fly the F-14A Tomcats, joining in with all the other fighters, as they soar to new heights, flying around on these jet aviators, you know, up in the sky, seeing all these wonderful breathtaking angles you know, vertically and you do get to see the close-ups of their helmets you know what they're called names and they got their masks to breathe and you get to hear uh, their calls uh, directly through the mic on the speakers and they always go around looking for their targets they log on they send some missiles to shoot the, the enemy that they targeted and they go around you know trying to make sure they join in with the rest of the team anyway and I love this opening too where it starts with Harold Faltermeyer's score that's so breathtaking or actually it goes like this <laughs> Bom, 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 
bom 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 You get the idea. And then it mixes in with the song Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins and it goes like this. <laughs> Hi away to the danger zone. Gonna take you right in through the danger zone. Hi away to the danger zone. Right into the danger zone. <laughs> awesome song, no doubt about it. So during the inception with two hostile MIG's 28s um, that's being run by Sam Merlin Wells, yeah, Lieutenant, played by Tim Robbins, who's joining in with Bill Cartel, known as Cougar, played by John Stockwell, as they're just flying around, practicing, you know, doing all their targets that they chose to do. And they're trying to be able to save them, which unfortunately they end up playing games, you know. They're acting like riding cowboys and they end up uh, pulling the birdie. <laughs> yes, the middle finger. Okay, here we go. And they took a picture and they just have fun. But then suddenly they're running out of fuel and Kugel got really scared that Maverick was, unfortunately, was about to leave them behind. But then he... Came to the rescue to save them, and everything was going swell because they're trying to get back to their base. And now, straight into where they land and shepherd him back to the carrier, Cougar quit his commission, and now both Madrick and Goose are being sent in his place by Stinger to attend at the Naval Fighter Repin School in Naval Air Station Miramar which is in San Diego, California, called simply Top Gun. Yes. And while they're there, on their first day of instruction, Maverick had unsuccessfully approached a woman at the bar, yes, a local bar where it has all these um, delicious food around. <laughs> it turns out that this beautiful blonde is actually an astrophysicist and a civilian Top Gun instructor named Charlie Brackwood. Her real name is Charlotte, played by Kelly McGillis. And she became very interested in Maverick upon learning of his inverted maneuver with the MIG-28. Yeah, and that's what he was doing. Doing that... Uh, Incredible maneuver, you know, flies below 10,000 feet up in the air, you know, doing all these uh, flips and spins and all of that that he was doing. It's just, he, he is so dangerous. It's insane. <laughs> but he's always joining in with Goose and they just had an awesome time, even with their cocky attitudes and all. So... In his first training hop, he tends to break the major rule of engagement, having to fly even more higher than ever, of which at this rate he does fly below 10,000 feet in the air. But he was about to defeat instructor Lieutenant Commander Rick Hederly, known as Jester, played by Michael Ironside. Yeah, which, <laughs> he's a naval aviator and a Top Gun instructor for sure. So he'd be able to train all of his students, try to figure out how to be able to target the enemy, shooting missiles, and, and how to fly vertically for sure with the rest. I mean, I know you see a lot of close-ups of their helmets with their call names they wear the mask and they put their speaker phones they'd be able to see how they're going on there for sure <laughs> anyway 
Maverick and Goose were also was the control tower for sure, which that's something that's something that they shouldn't be doing because they're getting into bigger trouble, but they're getting away with anything they got. You know, they're they're riding cowboys for sure. <laughs> But they're being reprimanded by Chief Instructor Commander Mike Metcalf, known as Viper, played by Tom Skerritt, who is about, who basically uh, is a veteran of the Vietnam War, but actually served uh, from with Duke Mitchell, who is indeed uh, Maverick's father. So at least now we know. But he is indeed uh, the commanding officer and instructor for Top Gun, hoping this will go for new heights for Maverick and Goose. So privately, Jester tells Viper that while he admires uh, Maverick's um, courageous skill that he's doing, he just wasn't so sure if they could trust him as, as a teammate in combat. So at that rate, in class, uh, Charlie objects to Maverick's aggressive tactics by going against the MIG 28s, but probably tells him that she admires his flying abilities and all of that. And at that point on, that's where they began a romantic relationship with each other. Yes, which that's where we see you know, Maverick, you know, riding around on his motorcycle, you know, just having fun, like he always does. He speeds around, you know, I guess he Dick sometimes gets into trouble or maybe he gets away with it. People think he's reckless. Um, I know there's even a moment, too, where they, they started, even though she doesn't date students, she often doesn't, but at that point on, they fell in love. Um... She was making dinner at, at her house uh, while he was just taking a shower and all that. And, you know, they were listening to music and all that stuff. <laughs> Such as the song, um, Sitting at the Top of the Bay by Otis Redding. Yeah. Sitting at the top of the bay, wasting time. Okay. Well, wow, they're just, you know, having some food and... And, and a drink of wine or so. Okay. Uh, but then there was also another scene too. While he was still combat and training. Um, with the rest. Even with Goose too. While aboard. Um, well. There was sort of a. A little bit of a conflict a little bit too. And I guess at that point on. Um. Because suddenly they end up um, falling in love while he was just, he started, during this uh, one moment, he was starting up the engine, was ready to leave, speeds up, but then Charlie chases him with her car, and that's where the song, uh, well, it was playing in the background. Take my breath away, boom, boom. Bum bum, bum bum, bum 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 bum, bum bum, bum bum, bum Watching in slow motion as I feel the love you say. Hey, you know the song <laughs> by Berlin. Um, I I love that song too. Anyway, <laughs> while they're just making love, they they're about to have sex, you know. Kisses and all. <laughs> Taking off their clothes. This is PG rated, by the way. <laughs> but you don't spot any uh, any nudity in the film, so you're lucky for that. Okay, but on training Hop 19, Maverick abandons his wingman, Hollywood. Yes, um, his real name is Lieutenant Rick Devin, played by Whip Hubley. He was basically the student from Top Gun, and, he, and his wingman is Iceman. Yes, Iceman. <laughs> Lieutenant uh, Tom Hosanski, who's played by Val Kilmer. 
Well, anyway, because as a result of what happened, Maverick had defeated the demonstration of the values of teamwork, and Jester tells Maverick that his flying is totally excellent, but criticizes him for leaving his wingman behind. So that's where we get Maverick's revival, Iceman, to call out his behavior at the locker room by saying he's totally foolish, dangerous, and worse than the enemy. Which, that's where Maverick responds, You're right, Iceman. I am dangerous. And you see Iceman just doing... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Such savage. Anyway, Maverick and Iceman have became the leading contenders for the Top Gun trophy, so they had to chase an A4 in the Hop 31. As Iceman suddenly gets trouble logging on the A4, and Maverick pressures him to break off so then it can move into the firing position. And this is the saddest scene that we ever got. And this is a shocker. And I know I'm going to spoil the surprise for you, but trust me. When I saw this scene, it really... I think I was ready to break down in tears. Because it really hurts. I mean, just when they're flying up on the sky, you know continuing to do their practice, you know, testing and all, up in the air. <sighs> Maverick's F-14 flies through Iceman's uh, jet wash and suffers a flame out of both engines. And at that point on, it was going completely out of control into a tailspin. And it was, it was a flat spin, basically. Un uncovered and then at that point on Maverick and Goose had ejected but Goose had fatally slammed into the Jetsons aircraft Kenobi and that's when Goose died bleeding all over his face uh, just as they both landed straight into the ocean and the Coast Guard had appeared and they grab uh, both Maverick and Goose. And, wow. That's what uh, led uh, Maverick feeling very guilty. And he felt like he was ready to quit while he was ahead. Because the Board of Inquiry had cleared Maverick of any wrongdoing around. But he, he felt like all this was his fault because he he gone way too excited, way too um, dangerous, and, you know, he gets, I guess he obviously focuses on what he does best, you know, he just wants to become, indeed, the best jet fighter ever, like, he was just so cocky that he just, he knew something's going to go wrong, or maybe he should have known, but, so, anyway, he seeks advice from Viper, who flew with Maverick's father in the Vietnam War at the time. And we learned that during an air battle, he was killed. So it kind of seems a rather situation with Maverick. So, on the contrary to official reports by faulting Maverick, that... Viper says he died, I mean, by faulting the Mitchell, yeah, Duke, that Viper says he died heroically, for sure. Like, he, he died as a hero, you know, saving the country. So, he figured maybe he can succeed if he regains his self-confidence. And hopefully, he'll be able to choose to graduate at Top Gun. Which he did. And he actually congratulated Iceman for his winning spirit and all. And how he finally won the Top Gun trophy. Which Maverick unfortunately could have had. So anyway, Iceman, Hollywood, and Maverick uh, receive immediate deployment and orders to deal with the crisis situation that was happening. 
and they're being sent to the Enterprise to provide air support by rescuing at the SS Ladin, which is a disabled communication ship that's drifting straight into the hostile water, uh, hostile waters around. Sorry. So once they are aboard, they are assigned to provide air cover with Maverick and Merlin on standby. Iceman expressed his concerns to Stinger about Maverick's mental state happening around, but he's told him that he's going to do his job no matter what happens. So now both Iceman and Hollywood are pulled into dogfights, you know, getting ready what appears to be the two MIGs. So they're getting ready to fight against the enemies. Um, but it turns out to be six for sure. And after Hollywood is being shut down, Maverick is scrambled, but he goes into the spin after he counters another jet wash that's appearing, but recovers. He basically shakens and breaks off, getting ready to fly and re-engage and shoot down all these free MIGs, while Iceman destroys the fourth one. But remains the two MIGs withdrawal for sure up in the skies. And once they finally return for a very triumph victory at the Enterprise, the pilots have found new respect to one another, yeah, including Iceman and Maverick. So now everyone is just um, home free to let go of all the guilt. From the training accident that's happening and now Maverick is getting ready to become indeed <laughs> and I'm sure for for everything that he's been doing and everything he's been taught for all the entire courses that he's trained for well this is going to be a memory to uh, Goose for sure and he even threw the dog tags away so for his memory. Oh, and by the way, uh, Goose actually did have a wife uh, with a kid. Yes, named uh, Carol Bradshaw, played by Meg Ryan. And the kid, of course, the son, would later become, as we speak, the next student of Top Gun, but that will be 36 years later or so. <laughs> Maybe 30 years. And I know that will soon be played by Miles Teller in the Top Gun uh, Maverick sequel. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm going too far. So at that point on, um, uh, Maverick offers a choice for any assignment, and he wanted to become the assistant of an instructor as Top Gun. Or, I guess, at this rate, the full-line instructor for Top Gun. So that way, he'll do exactly like how everyone else is done. And I think that's exactly what he's going to become later on. And then next thing you know, uh, both he and Charlie have reunited straight at the bar while the song, You Lost That Love and Feeling. Oh, that love and feeling by the Righteous Brothers. You lost that love and feeling. Now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie. Excellent. Incredible. A lot of stunts around, flying around. All these beautiful... F-14s, jet planes that they got. I mean, come on. I bet for those who watched this movie, they all felt like they just want to go onto these jet planes and just fly around in a loop, doing all these courageous stunts and all of that. You know, doing all these spins, flips, and everything. And then, of course, you know, you know play the good guy and the bad guy in, in that way. You know, targets log on and sometimes shoots the missiles and all that 
all that firing too. They had to shoot all the firing spots, everything. Uh, that's just a great team that you can get. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, teams around too. Like they got um, uh, Marcus Williams, uh, known as Sundown, played by Clarence uh, Gilliard Jr. Yeah, who passed away recently. Sucks. But um, he was there too. I mean, he's the radar accepted officer. Um, they got Rick uh, Rosovic who's uh, Lieutenant Ron Kerner, known as Slider. You got um, Barry Tubb as Leonard Wolf, you know, the Wolf Man. And all, all the other um, students around. Oh, and of course, there's always a moment when they were playing volleyball. Yeah, with Goose joining in, too. And that's where the song Playing With The Boys uh, by Kenny Longins played. <laughs> yeah. And all of that. Yeah, and, and they, it, it is like going to camp. I mean, that's that's what's made it so fun and exciting. Like, you really want to be up in the air doing exactly what, what you've been chose to do. I mean, no matter how excellent you are, I mean, you're going to become the best aviator fighter of them all. And that's for sure. Uh, anyway... Tom Cruise is just magnificent and totally uh, out of this world. Incredible, courageous, um, dangerous, but he's just awesome as Maverick. I mean, you just wanted to become the the R R L O, yeah, the lieutenant uh, officer to join on his uh, cockpit to fly around, you know, no matter what, as long as we don't get into bigger danger, but nevertheless, you just want to have fun until something goes wrong. <laughs> but you just want to hang there on the cockpit, you know, wearing your helmet with the call names of any kind, wearing a mask and making contact with all the other uh, uh, jet aviators around, all these uh, students, and are about to go after the the two MIGs and other, or even more MIGs and all that. And then you can see some explosions and some firepower and those missile launching and all that too going around. I mean, everything. That's what you see. <laughs> oh, it's just so breathtaking. Um, Kelly McGillis was great as an independent woman for an instructor of Top Gun. I mean, we you can basically tell that she... At first, you know, you're not so sure if she's if she's ready to date other students and all, but apparently that's exactly what we had in mind when when Maverick became the love interest of her. The love scenes and the love story is what it is, but that's okay. I can live with that. It doesn't bother me because I love the soundtrack that goes with it. And but hey, I mean. She's a great actress, too, no matter what. Uh, Belle Kimber, um, yeah, I mean, it, basically what you expect from the character of Iceman, I mean, because it's, he's the rival of them all as the Wayne Man. But he felt that, you know, because of his, of Maverick's attitude, I mean, this is where he feel like, you know, bullshit. I mean, the way he's acting and all that. But nevertheless, he ends up, you know, working as a team, and hopefully he'll he'll become his Rain Man. But he was great, nevertheless. And Anthony Edwards too, as his best friend Goose. I mean, you felt like there's a lot of great connection between Maverick and Goose. I mean, they're best pals, best friends. They stick together no matter what happens, and like. You know they're exactly what they are. They they just want to go for the need, the need for speed. They just want to have a great time. They want to be able to train for the best. And I know I'm repeating myself over and over, but whatever. That's what makes it so fun. It's just sad that all that could have been together. And it just seemed like when, when Goose was gone, he just lost a friend. 
And that's where he felt so guilty about all this. I mean, that's what you felt. I mean, to me, it's it's more about Maverick and, and Goose than Maverick and Charlie. I mean, they have a terrific friendship. And they'll always be remembered by him. At least, that's for sure, because now he's he's being traumatized all this time after that tragic accident that happened and occurred. Okay. And we got some great actors like Tom Skerritt, uh, James Tolkien, Michael Ironside, John Stockwell in a small role, and all the rest. Um, yes, uh, they also got, yeah, Meg Ryan was beautiful, still is beautiful too, and, you know, very, um, very quirky at times too, but hey, she, I gotta say, Goose was very lucky, and yeah, song too, and there's even moments when they were at the bar, they're just singing the song, uh, <laughs> Goodness gracious, great balls of fire! <laughs> oh, that was fun. And they all join in too. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, okay. Uh, the special effects was totally spectacular too. Now, we know the movie was shot at Super 35, so they're trying to be able to get the clear shots of all the uh, jet aviator planes, you know, the F 14 A Tomcats, and the and the beauty of, of dog fighting right there that's happening. Um, they shot all these aerial shots here and there. You see all the mountains, all the zoom ins, you know, through the lens that they got into it, right close to it. You know, how they speed up as fast as they can. And you get to see the clear skies with clouds around, you know, blue. Um, and I know with the yellow filter, I mean, they probably added some more sun. Uh, coming from the skies and how it shoots up with shadows around and all the energy that really went into all the way up um, they had some really incredible close-up shots and and some different angles um, here and there all vertically um, where you're inside the cockpits right away and how they begins to see scenes and how it's so intense how they did it too, when they're trying to go clear up the skies, you know, they flew all the way through around the skies uh, for the mountains and all, and then they go up and then they shoot, and wow, incredible how they did this. Um, and this this was high tech back in the 80s, you know, how they do these shots um, for their cameras. So they must have some incredible uh, cinematography, which is uh, done by. Jeffrey L. Cambal. And wow. And it's a, it is an incredible script by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. So they come up with a lot of memorable quotes here and there. And Tony Scott's direction is just indeed top notch right there. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. And I mean, with his films, this is exactly what he does in all of his movies You know, during that time period. When he was alive you know he's done a lot of all these uh shots you know where it does have these quick shots here and there these zoom ins and 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 all these uh, all these steady cameras but sometimes it just shakes around here and there how it moves uh instantly like like it's an mtv style editing that's what they were doing at the time that's wow <laughs> Now, the movie was so popular that, yes, it had a lot of merchandising, too. I mean, a lot of people were wearing those shades. They are wearing those T-shirts, those straight jackets, uh, leather, yeah, with patches around. I mean, everybody wants to become a, a jet fighter themselves, you know, a naval aviator <laughs> fighter. And... Um, I know there was a Diet Pepsi commercial. It's funny though too because you know there was a lot of Pepsi products in the film, <laughs> as you can see. Um, yeah, they had this famous uh, Diet Pepsi commercial that was shown um, on the VHS 
of Top Gun when it came out. Uh, so if you ever find that, yeah, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, but that was uh, very courageous. And boy, they could have probably used that for the new uh, Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> you know, Top Gun sequel that's long awaited. Of course, it'd be perfect. And um, there is a video game. Yes, the video game. And I know <laughs> Mr. James Rolfe, a.k.a. AVGN. Yeah, Angry Video Game Nerd. Play the game. And he has so much trouble having to fly the F-14A Top Can. Yeah, Tomcats. And every time he tries to land straight into the airport facility of the USS Enterprise he keeps missing like it ends up going straight into the ocean and he just keeps saying ass fuck <laughs> I do agree the game sucks but hey I had days of thunder so, <laughs> so go figure um I mean, for the NES uh, game. But I'm sure they had made some better games than this. I mean, there are a lot of Top Gun games that are way better than the N NES ones. And I'm sure that will be the case. And there also have been some... A lot of those... Um, at uh, All these Jet Aviator games, too. You know, these F-14 fighters here and there, or F-16, or any kind. You can probably get them from Sega Genesis and all that. So I kind of remember seeing those. It's probably the closest thing we'll ever get for a Top Gun game. <laughs> and I know this movie became so popular that um, it was a culture phenomenon. And then, even with its success, I mean, yes, uh, they had been re-released in theaters many times. Uh, they had an IMAX 3D re-release um, during the 2013 or so. There's even a 2021 re-release uh, for the 4K restoration. Yeah, because they figure they play this uh, you know, during the pandemic and hoping for sure that Top Gun Maverick will finally get its release, which it did in 2022. Yeah. So everyone loved this movie so much. There even was parodies of this too, like Hot Shots. Yes, Hot Shots um, by the team of, of the Naked Guns and the Airplane Films. Yes, uh, Jim Abrams uh, and the Zucker Brothers, um, Jerry and David, uh, which had Charlie Sheen and Valenia Galino with uh, John Cryer and um, what's his name? Um, oh, come on. And, and the rest of the cast here and there. <laughs> They had a sequel too, which did a parody of, of Rambo Free, which is Hot Shots Part Deux. Yeah. So yeah, they pretty much just parodied the Top Gun all the way, but it does other parodies too, for sure. Okay, and I, I know I'm taking so long, but I just love this movie. I never get tired of it. I watched this countless of times uh, ever since I was a kid. I watched this from, through that old uh, select TV tape that I still have. And I watch this on TV a lot, too. Whenever it's on, I just turn it on and just watch it. I love to listen to the soundtrack because the soundtrack is, is incredible. I mean, yes, Danger Zone, Take My Breath Away. Um, you also have songs like... Um, like playing with the boys, uh, Mighty Wings. Uh, I don't want to forget that. Yeah, Mighty Wings was just that's an awesome song by um, Cheap Trick, uh, Destination Unknown, and and um, wow, and so on and so forth. We got a lot of classic songs here and there, plus the the wonderful score by Harold Faltermeyer. And I know they they've done a lot of uh, influence to this movie too um i know a few good men sort of have a similarity to top gun because or, or even jag too not to mention ncis um, franchise it's kind of funny though because a few good men 
also has Tom Cruise, so it almost seems like he's sort of playing Mad Rick, but only this time he's a <laughs> he's a successful lawyer, or he's going to be successful. And I know um, Team America World Police parody this too, and oh, I mean, there's a lot of parodies of this, and oh, there was even a short film that I saw on Select TV a long time ago that did parody Top Gun. It was called Top Gum. Uh, and I'm sh I'm not so sure they have it on YouTube or any other place, but it was a short film that they played that where it's basically a school for dentistry instead of being a school for, uh, for naval um, aviation um, jet fighters. <laughs> but that's really clever. And that's the one where it had this one student who joins in, but he wanted to join Top Gun. Instead, he joins Top Gun and just to become a full-line dentist. But then this this instructor who's a ditz eventually ends up falling in love with this guy. Wow, here we go. <laughs> Um, if you ever find that short film, it's it, it's very funny. It's crazy. Uh, anyway. But nevertheless, uh, hop aboard on your mighty wings. Because Top Gun is an awesome spectacular. That's for sure. So I give that movie an incredible five stars. Yes. Five stars. Thumbs up as Maverick would put it, because he is dangerous, man. <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora, clear on the skies, getting ready to fly. Soaring through my wings here. And I'll see you later. Bye.